girls. Welcome to this month's Activate Her Teaching. We're ready to go again. Another month, another teaching. Happy to be able to bring it to you today. Yep. Right? Yep. So hey, this year, we are looking at what it takes to be able to say, hashtag, I am rooted. Mm -hmm. um, and we've looked at the process and we talked about it and we realized a few things along the way. And um, one is that not all things that we plant take root and grow. Right. And another thing that we talked about is that we've come to understand that it matters where you're planted yep, if sure. you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. So if you remember last month, we dug into the verse of Jeremiah 17, 8 and um, talked about how important it is to be deeply rooted in God's word. And this month, we are going to take it a little further and we're going to dig into the actual process right. of um, establishing deep roots in his word. And we're going to be pulling apart the parable um, in the New Testament Gospel of Matthew about yep. the sower and the seed. Yep. So you'll find um, Jesus uh, used parables often as a teaching tool uh, in, the, in the Gospels. And it's really just he, he used stories to, to illustrate points that he wanted to make that um, would bring further, deeper, more yep. valuable knowledge about a subject. So that's all a parable is really, yep. right? Yeah. Yep, he did use that a lot. And um, I think before we get started on that, I did a little review of where Jesus was going and like what had happened in his life and where he was at. So let's lay that out first. Okay, leading up to the... Yep, leading okay. up to the story. So he had, of course, you know, Matthew wrote about the genealogy. Uh, the Jewish nation is very um, focused on generational things and they want to know that connection so that's why he wrote the whole genealogy to prove that Jesus actually was who he said he was mm -hmm. and so he was born of course and then um, we don't hear much of his childhood but then Jesus goes and he's baptized by John and then he goes off he's tempted in the desert and then he comes back, and when he comes back from that temptation is when he calls the disciples to come and follow him. And now he's ready to begin his teaching ministry. So he's called his disciples, they're following him. Crowds are gathering around him as he's going along, and he takes them up to a mountainside where in chapter 5 we realize this is the Sermon on the Mount, and it's a very long sermon. I can imagine that they must have been there for days <laughs> listening to his teaching. Um, so he begins this teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. And one of those teachings is this parable. And he taught parables because they are so relatable. And he also used a lot of um, parables pertaining to farmers and seeds because that's what these mm -hmm. people That's what they knew. did. That's mm -hmm. what they knew. And so when we teach in a parable, it's a great story. It's telling a story that people can relate to. So this is what he said. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a 100 times as much as they had planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So the seed in the parable is the message of God's word. Mm -hmm. And if we think about a seed for a minute, if you thought about the seed, if you think, if you can imagine one on, in your hand, um, it kind of doesn't look like much. Right. It just looks like it's dead and dry, but in that seed is everything that is needed to bring forth the fruit that God intends to come out of that seed. Yeah. And um, if the sower in, in our parable is Jesus Christ yep. um, or or a, a preacher, or anybody who brings his word to mm -hmm. us, a mentor, um, a Bible teacher, mm -hmm. um, anybody who's bringing you the word. And then, of course, the ground or the soil that we're talking about is our hearts. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. And so this month we are going to focus um, our theme on hashtag I am rooted 
in good soil. Because as we're going to learn today um, through this teaching, that's where God and his word flourish, that's right. is in good soil. You can't have any other soil but good soil if you want the word of God to grow in your life right. and to become fruitful. And I really appreciate the fact that Jesus did not leave the people to wonder about this parable. He didn't tell them a parable and then send them home and say, and go figure go it figure out. Go figure out what it means, yeah. <laughs> Instead, he said he left them after he said, he who has ears to hear, let them hear. Okay, I have ears, I want to hear. And then he said, now listen to the explanation of this parable about the farmer planting seeds. And don't you just love mm -hmm. the fact that he can, he says that to us too today, you know? Okay, here's the word. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have ears to hear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, Are you paying here comes the explanation to that. I mm -hmm. just love that. Mm -hmm. So the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. The evil one then comes and he snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. So think about a path for anybody who's ever walked, gone on a hike anywhere, you go out on a path and it's been trampled and it's packed down. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. So that word that comes to you is easily snatched away when we allow our hearts to become hard. And this can happen to me often when I go to church or I'm listening to a teaching and I find myself not really paying attention to what has been said. Or even when I am listening to a teaching and I don't really want <laughs> to pay attention to what has been said. You know what I mean? For various reasons. For various <laughs> reasons. I don't like what they're saying. I I feel like it doesn't pertain to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like, well, I'm not that bad. <laughs> and so I don't listen. And I choose not to understand mm -hmm. that God's got something in it for me too. Yeah. Right. Well, I think for me, sometimes what happens, and maybe for you girls, um, you hear something presented um, out of, from the Word and you think, I, yeah, I, I guess I should have known that. Mm -hmm. I guess I should have known that. Um, but you still, I, but I still might not have a, the whole understanding of what's being said. Mm -hmm. But instead of digging into it, or instead of humbling myself and asking questions, right? You know, I just say I should have known. So I'm not going to. Yeah, I don't really know about it, but I'm not going to ask any because I don't want to look dumb. Right. You know, and I think the only route that wants to take hold there is what pride, pride. <laughs> you know so but so that could be the same the same kind yeah. of thing it's like you know the word is given um it hasn't been a, given a chance to you can i haven't give, given an understanding so it's plucked away by you know whatever evil wants to come along pluck it away yeah i remember one time a long time ago i was sitting in church and um, I was sitting next to a friend, and the pastor was speaking, and he was giving a message. And the whole time I sat there, I was kind of like this, and I was thinking, um, wow, this is a great word for her. <laughs> I, I really hope they're listening, paying attention. And, like, that thought went through my head. And right after that, the pastor said, now, don't sit there. Don't be sitting there and thinking that this is a word for somebody else. God's speaking to you. <laughs> and I was like... Who, who had the microphone on? How did they hear my thought? You know, because sometimes we can do that. We can mm -hmm. sit and we don't value the word. We don't appreciate the word. We think it's for somebody else because we are noticing where they're at in mm -hmm. their life. And mm -hmm. we, instead of saying, I I'm, I'm don't want to understand that this word has benefit for me and it has value for me, we say, I don't want it for me. I don't like it for me. Mm -hmm. I choose to not receive it for me. Mm -hmm. I I am guilty of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I think there's there's words, there's different topics that we're more relatable relatable mm -hmm. to than others. Yeah. Um, according to our giftings. Yeah, for know, sure. Because sure. we were talking to a mentor of ours the other day, and she, I could totally identify with what she was saying yeah. about when she hears a message on evangelism or missions and how she, her eyes kind of just glaze over because yeah. that's totally what happens to me because it's not my passion. Right. You know, and yeah. not that I don't find it valuable, but it's not my passion. So I kind of just check out maybe yeah. and, and don't let, uh, 
but there's always, the word is always alive and active and always, there's always stuff to pull out of it. Yeah, definitely. And if we don't listen, if we check out and let our eyes glaze over, then we are running the risk of missing what God is doing. Mm -hmm. And we want to stay alert to that mm -hmm. so that the evil one doesn't come and snatch out a seed that God wants to plant there. Because if we let our if we let our eyes glaze over and we check out when we're not passionate about something, then how will we ever know if God wants us to become passionate yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he's sure. got something for us in the future, but we're not willing to really listen and grab hold of it. And then the enemy comes and he mm -hmm. snatches it from mm -hmm. us. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Okay, so now back to the parable where Jesus says, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Mm, I can really relate to this one. You can see this one big in my life, can't you? When um, all those years ago, and I still, I'm, I'm learning how to take time, but um, as someone who's rather passionate, <laughs> I have allowed my joy at hearing um, a good word take root for a short season and think, oh, I got to go do this. Oh, I got to, you know, I need this and I'm going to start this ministry and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Not realizing that um, I left with joy, with great plans in my mind of what God was going to do without thinking and considering that I still had like rocks of relationships and rocks of a uh, home to run and a, and kids to raise and all these responsibilities that were, they were good rocks. They weren't necessarily bad rocks. Right. They were important rocks in my life. But um, the, the, what happened for me was I would, go off with joy, be excited about it, and then have the responsibilities of my home life. And all that joy was soon gone. Mm -hmm. And I didn't focus again on that. I pushed it aside and it didn't mean anything to me. And sometimes I even, I know for my own life that there were times that I resented being a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. There were times that I felt like my family life was getting in the way of what um, God had for me. And I resented that without realizing that my family life was my ministry. My relationships were my ministry. Did God have things for me along the way in that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But we have to be careful that we don't let our joy of what God is doing become a distraction to the wonderful things in our life. Mm -hmm. He melds them together. Yeah, it's, it becomes the, the trunk on which the yes. rest of the fruit is built yes. when the time comes. Yep. That seed is planted. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, oh, it was nothing, you know, and not mm -hmm. letting it flourish, we kind of get a little resentful. Mm -hmm. At least for me, I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I if it was part of my agenda, then it was great. If it mm -hmm. wasn't part of my agenda, then forget it. Mm -hmm. But on the flip mm -hmm. side of that, there are people who allow habits to crowd out the word, bad mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. You know, there are negative rocks too mm -hmm. that crowd out mm -hmm. that seed. Yeah, and thoughts. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. This. I kind of looked at this um, for, my, for my interpretation of it. I just saw that sometimes people can say things that become the rocks. Yeah, oh, for sure. Keep you from um, being from things being able to be taking root where they should be. Like sometimes hurtful things are said mm -hmm. to us and we bury them down deep. And, um, for example, um, I love to worship. I mean, I just, I love to worship the Lord. I love to sing. I could, yeah. I like to dance sometimes, but um, I don't do that in public very often. <laughs> um, but I do like to really sing and worship the Lord. But every time I go to church or any public setting where I worship, I have this thought struggle in my head um, that God does not enjoy my worship. You know, oh, I struggle wow. to think how could God possibly enjoy my worship and it's all because of this rock that lays underneath there that I constantly have to pull at and and through the words of um, of a chorus teacher 
mm. that was spoke that were spoken to me when I was in fifth grade. So wow. you know, so that is, and so every Sunday, every Sunday, I just struggle, you know, and it's like, but I have to. It robs me of the joy of yeah. worshiping. Yeah, sure. You know, and I mean, granted, the teacher was accurate in his assessment <laughs> of my <laughs> vocal abilities, but you know, but that doesn't mean that. I mean, God made me this way. He knew yep. I couldn't sing, and he obviously he uses it to kind of shape me and mold me, but. Um, and I just have to remind myself that, you know, I am a sweet sound to him That's anyways, right. <laughs> even if That's it's right. only him. But I do think, you know, sometimes those rocks like that can stop us from, you know, from developing a greater heart for worship. For me, that's what it did, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, I saw this play out last summer when we did landscaping around our house and we put rocks because it, the um, ground soil mm -hmm. was so bad. Mm -hmm. So we put rocks around and um, we expected that we would never have to weed again. We would never have to pull anything out by putting these rocks in there. We put the black tarp down. We did everything that we knew uh, should be done to prevent that. But we didn't think about the seeds that fall from the trees. And they, um, those little mm -hmm. seeds those will come things, down. Yeah. And one, I don't know, it was probably over the course of a week, we happened to walk outside and notice there were all these little seedlings that were growing. These little maple trees had started, they had fallen and they were, <laughs> and, I, and we were like, what just happened here? <laughs> but um, what I saw was that they did not have enough soil to grow and the hot sun, when it hit them, they just wilted mm -hmm. right over the rock mm -hmm. and they were very easy to pluck out. Mm -hmm. And so they were, you know, they were a little irritation for a little bit, but they weren't going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful about the rocks that mm -hmm. we allow in our lives that are going to prevent that that seed of the word, whether it's, you know, relationships, whether mm -hmm. it's a bad habit, whether it's attitudes, whether it is persecution, whatever it is, we have to be careful. Um, even the words of others mm -hmm. can be a rock for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all struggle with that. Don't you think that we all I think so. struggle with what other people are going to think and what they say bears um, bears a bigger fruit sometimes than we should allow it. Now, moving on. So the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. Now, God intends for those who follow him to live in him. In him. That's like in, enmeshed in him. So much so that the same peace that allowed Jesus to sleep in the boat in the midst of the storm is produced in us. That's some pretty powerful <laughs> piece, if you ask me. And I really like this quote by Pastor A.R. Bernard. He said that um, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of internal values that guide how you act, feel, and think. The internal mm -hmm. values bring about the peace, you know, mm -hmm. I, I or not. Or not exactly. It's where we're going to allow that focus. No, I know because this is a, this this is this is the biggest struggle for me. Ooh, this I'll is tell you. This is where um, every day my struggle lies in. Just I, I we look back and Steve and I look back and when we were in, engaged and we have all these ideas of what we want our life to look like and we set these goals for ourselves, you know, and we, we put in practices in our life that brought about um, blessing and we put in practices in our life that um, got our closer to the goals and worked hard and everything. And now that we're realizing the fruit of all of that, I have no peace because I, the, the cares of the world, you know, have, yeah. have just the thorns have just come in and, and, um, and, and it's like those internal values. It's like, the internal value is the word, you know, my yeah. internal value needs to be rooted in, um, in the word and, and in the peace that I know that is available to me if I just would let it be, yep. you know, so, but it's that yep. thorny, you know, that thorny ground where stuff is just, you know, cr 
crowding in and wants to choke you yeah. and wants to choke out the light, wants to choke out the the nourishment, wants to choke out the sunshine, you know, yeah. um, then it just, um, that's the kind of ground we're talking about here in this part of the um, parable. Yeah. And right now we are definitely in a season where the lure of the world, the lure of wealth, um, and the um, power, the emotional mm -hmm. response is um, so important right now. And I realized over the last couple of days um, because I have been, I mean, let's face it, right now, we are in a season of uprising and, you know, there's a lot of upheavals going on and there's a lot of responses. There's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of noise. Really, this morning, I felt like the Lord gave me his insight on it. I am a fixer. Mm -hmm. And because I am a fixer, when I see the what I believe to be uh, wrong, or I believe somebody to be um, that is they're off base on something, or they're in trouble somewhere, I wanna fix that for them. Mm -hmm. I wanna help them. And as a control freak and fixer, I feel like it's my responsibility almost to make sure that they understand God's truth and what the truth is for them. And sometimes I, like on social media, I'll feel like I want to post a response, post something that is going to um, let the truth be profound in, a, in the greatest way for them that is going <laughs> to make them realize, oh, Colleen has all the answers. She's <laughs> absolutely correct on that. But this morning, I felt like the Lord said to me, you know, you don't have to allow it to go get so big inside of you mm -hmm. that you become almost shaky and fearful that they're going to miss the boat, that they're not going to be right, that you've got the answers. But what I can do is back away and I can pray and I can ask God, Lord, if I'm supposed to help this person, then give us a personal conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so quick to post things on social media it, thinking that it's going to change the world to our perception. And I think that one thing that has happened with that is we have lost the personal connection mm -hmm. that we have with one another now. Absolutely. And that's where this Activate Her, I feel like God wants to use Activate Her. Mm -hmm. This is a season for women to come together mm -hmm. and to have personal connections again, to put away the phones and the social media and say, you know what? We lived without social media for how many years? Mm -hmm. God's able to help us connect mm -hmm. in relationship if that all passes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you think about it, where are you going to take that person And when you have that conversation? Where are you going to take that person? You're going to take them to the Word. To the Word. You're going to bring them exactly. before the Lord. Yeah. The, you're, you know, you know, you're going to take them to the one who has the answers. Yeah. You know, and... and um, and that's where they need to be anyways. So, yeah. 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 So, for sure. Yeah. Because it's not, so. I mean, yeah, it's, it's brilliant and as much of the word that you know <laughs> and uh, how awesome you are at sharing it, you know, but that's good. That's what you do. That's, that's who you are. You just point people back to the word and, and to the Lord. So, and uh, yeah. then that's where, the, that's where the answers are for sure. And that's where the peace is and that's where the joy is. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's uh, more on a personal level from now on. You yeah. know, I feel like we have allowed social media to infiltrate the mm -hmm. love respect that Absolutely. we have for one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, and that's the key, isn't it? The love, the yeah. love aspect of all of it. Yeah. And that's the Jesus part. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now on to um, the the last part of the parable that Jesus was teaching from. And that's where he told us that the seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. So here we are talking about the good soil. We're mm -hmm. talking about the rich, cultivated, um, nourishing soil that that the roots can really permeate and go down deep. And isn't that really just where we want to live? Isn't that where we want to be all the time? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And one of the things that we have to realize is that we're responsible for that. 
it's up to us to make sure that we're living in the right soil, that our, that our hearts are always ready, that our hearts are always prepared. Um, and so I looked up online how to prepare the soil. And the first thing they talked about was choosing the right location. So choose the right location. Find a place where you can go to get into the word, whether it's in the morning or the evening. I prefer mm -hmm. to get up in the morning and mm -hmm. start my day yeah, me too. with the word of God. So I have my location and I go. I get into a quiet place and that's where I spend my time. Um, and then it said you have to have good sun exposure. And so I thought about that and I thought, you know what, that means that means you choose the right church. That means you choose a Bible-believing okay. church that's going to teach you the word of God in truth, even when it's a hard word. And you may not always like what is being said because it's pressing on you and God is digging in the soil a little bit. Um, you, you have to have the sun, S-O-N, exposure. <laughs> you have to have that. And one thing I realized is that, you know, God has different tools. And I've got my pots here. So I have some pots I'm going to show you. Now, this right here is a plant from the summer. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it was. It was a beautiful plant this summer. I have done nothing to care for this plant. It, I set it on a shelf and... There it sat, and look what's happened to it. And I thought, you know, this represents somebody who goes to church on Sunday but does nothing to care for the seed that was planted in that uh, on that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. You you went in, you heard it, the rocks, the worries, all of that has produced this. You're dry, you there's no life there, and God wants something different. He is ready to say, okay. Let's prune this back. Let's plant some new words. Let's get some seeds going. Let's stir the soil. This right here is another pot. Plant's missing, but all the dead roots are still in there. I don't take those out. But, and it's hard as a rock. So there's your hard soil that nothing, if I drop seeds in there, that it's gonna do nothing. It's not gonna produce anything. Here is my pot that I've been digging around in. I've been digging in this soil because it had a fern that I tried to keep alive, but I could, <laughs> oh, that not, poor keep fern. It, I could not keep it alive. But I've been digging in there. The soil is getting prepared. I can move it. Mm -hmm. There's old roots that need to be taken from it, but I can move it. And then I realized, you know what? God always uses different tools. Look at just like a gardener. They have different tools for different needs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are, we don't like the tool that God is using at a time. Somebody that we don't think uh, we, has the right answer, <clears throat> God may be using that person as a tool in that moment. And you know, sometimes he puts people in our life that rub us the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Pointy, a little pointy. Yeah, they, <laughs> you know, you don't like that God is digging around in the soil of your heart by putting somebody in your life that you don't necessarily care for their personality or you don't like the way they talk to you. Well, instead of pointing out all the things that you don't care for or you don't like about that person, God is saying, I'm using that person as a tool to point out the things in your life mm -hmm. that I don't care how you think mm -hmm. about that person mm -hmm. or, or how you allow that person to rise up anger inside of you. We have to be careful that we don't diminish what God is doing in us because we don't like the tool that he's mm -hmm. using at the time to point it out. Mm -hmm. You know, he mm -hmm. digs in our soil, yeah. in the soil of our heart. Yeah, and that, that's it, it's the heart, you know, it's that heart thing, it's, yeah. and it's the heart has gotta be, you've gotta allow yourself um, ac you got to allow the Lord access to yeah. that heart so that he can just do a little digging and, and, um, yeah. you know, and, and to be so that he can, that seed can, can take root and can permeate so that right. the fruit is different than, do you want the same fruit you've had forever? Honestly, right. do you really want the same fruit, um, that you've always had in certain areas of your life? Right. I mean, or do and we want to grow? people see this. People will see when you look like this. Mm-hmm. We, all, we know it. We know mm -hmm. something is wrong. We know that there's no life yeah. there. Yeah. We know that something needs to change. Right? right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, girls. Now, listen, here's the thing. If we're going to grow, 
and become the person and walk in the identity that God wants us to walk in, then we are going to have to allow God's word to be planted in the fertile soil of our heart. We're going to have to allow that. Mm -hmm. And and, um, if we take a deeper look at the scriptures, we see that there is listening, there is hearing, and there is understanding. Listening leads to hearing, truly hearing what is being said. And then truly hearing leads to that understanding that we need. Um, And then it's the understanding that's going to produce the harvest that Jesus talked about that is so greater than what we can even imagine. Exactly. Listening, truly hearing, and understanding God's word is the key to putting down the kind of root that produces fruit. Listening, Mm -hmm. which is allowing that seed of the word to be planted in the first place. Truly hearing, which is the process of making sure that that soil that it's landing in is good Mm -hmm. and rich and fertile and that there are no barriers under the surface. And then understanding is the seed that it sprouts up, the life and eventually the fruit that is produced from that seed. So that brings us to our activation plan. Um, And um, the question is, what is the condition of your soil? I mean, Colleen and I, as we went through this whole teaching, have looked at each soil condition and we've realized that at any given time, yeah. any one of these soils can be present in our lives, depending yeah. on the circumstances or the or the area of our yeah. lives that we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. So, so we're asking you to, to do the same thing. We're asking you yeah. to, t- to pull this apart, look at the different soils, look at the areas of your life that are that are are relatable to those different areas kind of you think about it journal it talk about it whatever works for you but really spend some time um Mm -hmm. figuring out you know how your soil how what the condition of your soil and how it's it's playing a part in uh, in your everyday life so um that's pretty much what we've done here and and that's what we're asking you to do right yeah yeah, it's a good time to ask yourself, you know, who or what am I allowing to steal the seed from the Word? We devalue the Word of God when we allow a rock to sit in our life that God never intended to be there. An attitude, a bad habit, an addiction of any kind. We are devaluing the Word of God when that comes first. So move the rock. Get the rock out of there so that the seed of the word of God can grow. Mm -hmm. Ask God to show you what it is that is preventing that seed from going where it needs to go Mm -hmm. so that it'll take root and it'll be strong enough to survive. Mm -hmm. Yep. And remember, I mean, this is up to you. I mean, we, we, the seed that we just threw out to you is to take this teaching and break it apart and and make it your own yeah you know and it's up to you whether you do that or not mm-hmm. right so yeah so that's um and one more thing we want you to do is we want to send you something this month mm-hmm. we're going to send each of you who is sitting in a meeting today um we're going to send you a little something so it's very important that your coordinator gets your um, name and your address your mailing address so that we can actually send you something tangible yeah okay so we can connect with you in that way okay? yeah Yep. So don't leave unless you have given that to her and um, then she'll send it to us. And that way, throughout this entire month, we want you to be able to say, hashtag, I am rooted in good soil. And so we're going to do the work to make that happen. All right. God's going to get a tool out. Don't be afraid of it. (laughs) Bye. Have a great discussion.